Hello and welcome to day two of UCAD 21. Welcome to everybody and a special welcome to anyone who wasn't with us yesterday. My name's Cathy Smith and I'm going to be your moderator. Now, we've been focusing on the new partnership on connected, cooperative and automated mobility, which is about to be launched in the EU. And today we'll be looking at what we need to do to really get CCAM on the road. We'll be looking at what sort of public and private investment is needed and what will spur that investment. And of course, international cooperation is really important. So in our final session today, we have speakers from the US, from Japan, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand and South Korea to give some insight as to what's happening in other parts of the world when it comes to connected and automated driving. Just to remind you, we're using Slido to ask questions and also for us to ask you questions at certain points. So you can see that uh, that's available on the platform. Otherwise, you can scan the QR code and uh, look at Slido on your phone or another device. Get tweeting. We want you to tweet, we want you to talk about this. So it's hashtag EUCAD2021, UCAD2021. So we... Look forward to lots of tweets. Now, don't forget to visit the virtual exhibition where there are Horizon 2020 projects on show, as well as other automated mobility initiatives. That's via the homepage. And there is a networking session on the platform. And there you can set up one-to-one -one meetings with other participants or exhibitors. And you can network in the breaks or at the end of the day. And that's also available through the home screen. So we're going to start today hearing from someone for whom cooperative, connected and automated mobility is at the very centre of his work. He is Henrik Hollelei, he's Director General of DG Move at the European Commission. And Henrik is going to give us some thoughts on how CCAM fits with the larger digitalisation and decarbonisation agenda of the EU. So we're delighted to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. It's a uh, it's a pleasure to uh, to be with you and uh, and I'm really uh, very uh, very keen to uh, to have this opportunity to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to share my thoughts with you and uh, to kick off the second day of this conference on uh, connected and automated driving. Uh, of course, uh, I guess like anyone else, I would have preferred to be here in person, but um, unfortunately, we are still not out of the pandemics and. Um, Let's hope that we get there soon and that we can meet again normally in the good old way, see each other eye to eye and enjoy the warmth of uh, human contact. And uh, of course, uh, now having to revert to all the uh, virtual connections, uh, uh, I also was hoping to address you from a much uh, nicer background, but um, we were not able to connect. So you have to, uh, you have to settle with my, with my own messy office here. I, I do believe that this conference is a, is a great opportunity to, uh, to discuss um, and also to promote uh, new ways of mobility that would be soon integrated um, to our everyday lives. We are living in a fast paced globalized world in which technology and uh, innovation constantly challenge our habits and daily life. And of course now pandemic, of course, on top of that. The world around us is in constant change as new ways of doing business, new solutions and new technologies are deployed in a pace we have never, ever seen in the history of humankind. For some, the change is difficult to follow. The others, at the same time, would like to accelerate it. Finding the right balance and right pace and new opportunities for all is a key to success. And the challenge for politicians, decision makers, regulators. We have to think of digital innovation not as an objective in its own right, but as a tool that helps us reach our policy objectives and contribute positively to our lives and working methods. It must help us make our mobility system safer, more sustainable, more resilient, more efficient, more connected, more inclusive, and support the creation of new and high quality jobs attracting new talent around the world. To move to this direction, the Commission under the leadership of uh, um, Mrs. Valean, our Commissioner, adopted the Sustainable and Smart Mobility Strategy. The pandemic has shown 
that in times of crisis, concerted, proportional, and timely responses at the EU level are necessary. That is why the EU and its member states must do their utmost to continue to preserve the integrity and enhance the functioning of the single European transport area. Unilateral, uncoordinated measures make it impossible for our transport and logistics systems to function correctly. Through the value chains, this presents very detrimental knock-on effects to our wider economy, including the competitiveness of our industrial sectors and many jobs across the EU. And that is why our sustainable and smart mobility strategy is very timely and important. The success of this strategy would indeed depend very much on a solid and well-functioning single market, where competition is the norm, bottlenecks, missing links, and unsubstantiated barriers are removed. This is also a precondition for the success of the connected and automated driving or any other digital solution that will be integrated in the future to our mobility and transport system. We need something which works across Europe. What we don't need is a patchwork based on national member states and systems which are not interoperable then we will be losing out a lot. Coming back to the strategy, which is structured around three key objectives, making the European transport more sustainable, smart, and resilient. And there, as you see, the digitalization, new solutions, they go as a thread throughout all of them. First, promote more sustainable mobility. Today, transport accounts for a quarter of the EU's total greenhouse emissions. Transport emissions have continued to rise in recent years. Our goal is to be the first climate neutral continent by 2050 and to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 55% by 2030. This requires ambitious changes in our transport policies, in our mobility policies, the way our transport is powered, the way our transport is functioning. We need efficiencies and uh, we need to make sure that uh, there is going to be a change. Because without that, it's also clear that. Uh, there will be no license to grow. Secondly, to promote smarter mobility. Digitalization has become an indispensable driver for the modernization of the entire transport system, making it seamless and more efficient while further reducing emissions. Europe needs to use digitalization and automation to further increase levels of safety, security, efficiency, reliability. At the same time, Europe should use digitalization and automation to be among the leaders in transport manufacturing and services. This is also, of course, a global aspect. And I was very pleased to hear also that um, you have <coughs> speakers coming from different parts of the world. We need to listen to the others. <coughs> also, learn <coughs> from the others. But also, at the same time, trying to make sure that uh, Europe stays in front. Third, promote more resilient mobility. As mentioned, the coronavirus pandemic has shed light on the vulnerabilities of the single market and has caused healthy companies to lose jobs and revenue. Our strategy sets out much needed reforms, policies, and actions to support the sector in its recovery. It highlights the enormous need for additional investments to make the transition to a sustainable and smart mobility happen. We talk about 23, 230 billion euros per year from year 2030. The strategy also emphasizes that such a transition should leave nobody behind. Mobility must be available and affordable for all. Rural and remote regions must remain connected. And European transport and mobility must offer good social conditions to its workers and provide attractive jobs. Let me now go a little bit more in detail. First, concerning the sustainable mobility. We need new technologies, new services, new mobility schemes for tackling sustainability challenge. In short, all transport modes should become smarter and more sustainable, which are in fact two sides of the same coin. In addition, the transport system should be more integrated and truly multimodal, where digitalization acts as glue in bringing the different transport modes successfully and efficiently <coughs> together. Digital solutions <coughs> link all, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Digital solutions link all modes of transport. And this is something that we aim to encourage and to accelerate. 
it will help us to <coughs> attain our sustainability objectives, make our companies more competitive, as well as provide a better service to our citizens and businesses. Air pollution, noise, traffic jams, and lack of urban space, energy consumption. These are the key challenges to address, especially in urban areas. We think it's possible to optimize travel planning and the travel experience, and at the same time, lower the impact on the environment. This can be achieved by zero and low emission, automated, sharing, and on-demand mobility solutions. If we integrate the CCAM solutions in sustainable multimodality, develop the necessary infrastructure, put in place sustainable urban mobility plans, then we can bring solutions to these challenges, while offering also, at the same time, a more pleasurable travel experience. Smart mobility. CCAM can definitely and effectively contribute to smarter mobility. Automation and digitalization have a huge potential <coughs> to optimize the way we plan and experience our travels. Connected and automated mobility can bring more autonomy to passengers, allow them to use their travel time for other activities. When pooled or shared, it can optimize the usage of cars and the need of infrastructure especially on parking. When connected, it can bring more safety and efficiency by cooperating directly with their environment, the infrastructure, and other road users. Connectivity can also deliver real-time information to better plan and match demand with capacity. By doing that, it can avoid traffic jams, pollution peaks, reduce travel time, save lives in critical situations. We think that smarter mobility is mobility that optimizes efficiency at system level that combines the most sustainable mode for each leg of the journey, and that adapts to its ever-changing environment. In addition to improved safety and comfort, the economic potential of increasing the efficiency of our transport system is also significant. Just by the way of example, congestion costs the EU economy more than 1% of GDP, or actually the equivalent of the EU budget in normal times. Imagine more than 2% actually in denser central parts. It's pure economic waste, reducing congestion, making transport fluid means more efficient and reliable logistics, which in turn supports the competitiveness of EU industrial economy and also the efficiency. More sustainable, efficient, safer transport system can only be achieved through innovation and technological advancement. It will also require further collaboration, interaction, between the public and private sector, and we must aim to create synergies between transport, energy, and digital technologies to support the transformation of the sustainable and smart transport system in the EU. We must be open to new technologies and new business models. I consider this absolutely essential. Thirdly, a bit more about the resilient, inclusive mobility. CCAM can also contribute to a mobility system that's more resilient and more inclusive. We should leave no one behind. CCAM can provide mobility to those that have limited or, ac or no access to road transport today. I think about the older or disabled people and people who live in areas without well-developed public transport. I think about people who cannot or do not want to buy a private car. As a first step, we created the single platform on cooperative, connected and automated mobility, the so-called CCAM platform. It gathers all relevant public and private stakeholders <coughs> Sorry, bundles the views of different commission departments to coordinate the open road testing of connected and automated mobility, the link with pre development activities. Diverse groups work together, developing a research agenda. They also exchange on key topics, such as the physical and digital infrastructure to support CCM on road safety, on the access and exchange of data, and cybersecurity, as well as on connectivity. The first concrete outcome of this work is the new EU partnership under the Horizon Europe and CCAM. I find this a great opportunity, and I think that uh, it will also bring a lot of collaboration, a real collaboration and cooperation in order to advance this agenda.
Concerning the development and deployment of CCIM in the coming years, the strategy has set out an action plan of concrete policy measures structured around 10 key areas for actions, the so-called flagships, that will guide the Commission's work in the years to come. It also sets milestones that show where we want to be in 10 or 30 years from now. Over the next years, we will complete the legal framework on the approval of automated vehicles and adopt the legislation for the approval of connected and automated vehicles. We will provide, we will also further promote intelligent transport systems through the revision of the ITS directive and the related delegated regulations on real time traffic information and on multimodal travel information services. We will also develop a new initiative to make multimodal mobility easier. Seamless multimodal mobility, ITS, require access to N to do and reuse of certain data. This must be made easier through the coordination mechanism of the national access points and the creation of a common European mobility data space. Absolutely essential, a key. Let me also stress that when we talk about the digitalization of smart mobility, one of the key issues <coughs> is the availability and processing of data, as it will help us achieve the objectives I have also mentioned earlier. In future, automated driving data can increase safety by improving obstacle recognition and avoidance. Data will enable a citizen to plan and experience a seamless multimodal trip by proposing the right mobility services at the right moment, at the right place. It means that from a single trip, you move to a journey of multiple trips. But it all has to be one seamless experience. Data will help optimize traffic through better information and planning for both passengers and freight. Smart mobility and sustainable mobility in this context go hand in hand, two sides of the same coin. We are also proactively working on a new partnership on the CCIM for which we are marking 500 million euros to develop mobility services for people and freight based on highly automated vehicles. 162 million euros are allocated for the work program 2021-22. It is equally important to continue to support deployment activities notably through the existing and very successful sea roads platform and of course using the facility uh, the, the funds from the connecting europe facility ladies and gentlemen there are many interesting challenges ahead of us and there is a holistic vision and the ambition that needs to be turned into a reality ultimately we have to make sure that the single european transport area functions well and sustainable connected and automated mobility is deployed throughout the eu we do not need artificial barriers, and we must make sure that we get this right. It's a great opportunity to lay foundation for a new ways of mobility, and we just cannot fail here. And we will not if we work together and with a positive goal in mind. I wish you a very interesting conference, and of course, uh, thank you for your kind attention. I think it's great to bring so many people together also across the world, and I think it is extremely important to pursue this uh, fascinating agenda. Last but not least, uh, dear friends, uh, of course, uh, stay well, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Henrik. That's wonderful. Don't worry about your office. We like a messy office. It makes us all feel at home. And we, make, we know you're a busy man when we see that. But some really interesting points that you make there. I mean, you know, basically the CCAM partnership is a great opportunity got to get it right and that's what we're going to be talking about in a moment. Um, Henrik also says talks about the need to listen and learn from other parts of the world but Europe has to stay in front. Uh, there are additional investments of course are needed and we will also have a session talking about that but I mean the, the figure about one percent of GDP uh, goes on congestion costs. It's quite shocking isn't it? So um, there's so much that that uh, that that Henrik said that's launching into what we want to talk about today and saying we don't want to patchwork, it has to be interoperable. And that's what it's all about, it's this partnership and, and getting right. So uh, Henrik, thank you very much indeed for being with us and starting us off so well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me and uh, all the very best. Thank you.